oh, the PTB is out. Surprise PTB drop? They've never done that before. That's pretty cool. Let's go. This is going to be really exciting. I can't wait to get my hands on the new character and see where they fit in the power scale. You know, I haven't really watched anything on Twitter or Twitch about him yet. So I'm going in fresh and unspoiled. Almost there. Yes. Let's get our hands on it. Okay, now that I've spent some time on the Houndmaster, I do believe that they are a double D tier killer with no real reason to play them other any other killer in the game. They're a weird mixture of Deathslinger, Wesker, Dracula, your mom, and behavior really should have exercised more creativity with this killer's power. Instead of just recycling hey, the same uh, killer power over and what, over and what's he over doing? again. I think oh, especially you know, Dracula, just we saw that giving a take on a character that's still in the PTB. Oh, that's, that's uh, powers into a kit. weird. I mean, did he spend a lot of time with them at least? Oh, he just, you know, hit the play button. That's it. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a little early. Hey, I'm ranting here. Get out. Hi, guys. Right here, and welcome to another commentary video. So, on Thursday of last week, Behavior decided to surprise us with a PTB out of nowhere. Out of nowhere, which is funny because most of us were expecting just dev notes and not actually the PTB itself. However, the character hadn't even been out for 12 hours before content creators were already left and right giving their hot takes about the strength of the Hound Master. Some people were saying it's an A tier killer. Some people were saying it's a D tier killer. Some people were saying that she was absolutely a devastating killer that with some time and skill investment, you could be one of the top 10, 15 killers in the game. However, other big content creators were lamenting their poor design and lack of strength, signing her as a bottom 10, bottom 15 killer in the game. How could these takes exist at the exact same time for the exact same character? Well, that's because there's no way to f***ing tell yet. Wild well, concept, I know. So let's go ahead and break that down. First, I do want to say that I think the Houndmaster does have a cool design, but overall kind of clunky, but that's nothing that they can probably work on over the time that she is in PTB to when she hits live. But at least in her current state, I do find her kind of frustrating because there are times I'll send Snug straight through a survivor and it won't latch onto them, but other times I won't even be close and it'll hit them. It's just kind of confusing right now, but like I said, hopefully they can uh, wrap that up. Also, for those of you who are expecting thoughts and review videos for every single dev notes, BTB, etc., I'm going to be slowly moving away from those for reasons that we're going to cover in today's topic, <laughs> which is a perfect segue because I feel that just like with real life news that... A lot of people are so desperate to get information out and content out onto the scene that it sometimes and often does come at the detriment to the info and the content that they are spreading. How could one content creator say that the killer is godlike and the other say they're not worth playing? Well, it's simple because it's impossible to tell how strong or weak a killer is if they're not even out yet. DBD killers are complex. Even some of the weaker ones in the game have efficient strategies or techs that make them better overall and helps you reach their maximum potential that you would not have otherwise. Obviously, no one's going to have that on any killer if they're not even out of PTB yet. What takes should realistically be our just impressions. I have over 7,000 hours in Dead by Daylight. 7,124 as of recording. Uh, <laughs> man, I really need to touch grass. Uh, <laughs> I can get a general beat on how good or bad a killer will be in a ballpark. If Behavior releases an M1 killer without much anti-loop or map presence in 2024, they're probably going to be C or D tier, probably. Um, but if they release on the flip side a killer that has a lot of map presence and very good anti-loop, odds are they're probably going to be B tier or higher. But those are, at the end of the day, just impressions. I don't know for sure. I remember when Singularity came out, which people now paint as a very skill uh, expressive killer and one of the best killers in the game, top 10, 15, very, very strong killer. People were painting them when they first came out as a middling killer that really didn't have a lot to them. Remember the thing that I heard the most was that despite his abilities, there was simply too much effort for too little return and essentially became a M1 killer with extra steps. That's funny because that was initially my first impression when the character first came out. I was like, these, this is a lot of stuff you got to juggle just to have slightly better chases. This doesn't feel really worth it. And there was no way anybody could see that on character release. So the character was mostly relegated to that M1 killer with extra steps kind of uh, notation. A lot of content creators then forgot him. Clearly, now in 2024, we couldn't be more wrong about that. Even before the killer's quality of life updates that recently came through, the killer was a machine. Unintended. They are simultaneously able to hold a presence on the map while mowing down survivors with ease. Clearly, almost everybody was wrong about that one. The problem is that nobody really phrases these takes as impressions, which is what they are, but they frame them more so as objective fact. It was clear the writing was on the wall that Singularity wasn't that great because they were a hassle to learn and a hassle to maintain, so it wasn't worth it, which, you know, obviously we see is not the case. Furthermore, content creators rarely go back to correct their mistakes, often because just the flow of content creation means that it's like, you know, it's in the rearview mirror. Once I, once I say it, once I do that, it's out and it's gone. But the problem is that 
your audiences take these ideas and these feelings and they internalize them and make them law. That's the real issue. What you say in the heat of the moment and forget about for you becomes solid fact to your audience, which then they spread and take to other content creation spheres and to their friends and to their fellow players and to anything. They take it all over the community. And despite the fact that you realistically don't have enough information to make that call about a character, a perk, a map, etc., you do and then your audience goes and spreads that into other community spaces where they argue and fight despite nobody truly having a full view of what this character is actually like if i can be so honest if i can be so real which is like <laughs> what i usually do but hey btb is btb days are usually some of the most stressful days for me when it comes to content creation especially when i stream at twitch.tv slash the mr headache uh, because it what should just be a fun showcase uh, and experience of the soon to be released content basically just becomes a debate all day for like four or five hours uh, with many people just parroting opinions and ideas that other content creators have spread as law when they should just be impressions. Well, uh, Chicken339 said that the killer was dog shit, so they have to be, right? Like, Ch Ch Chicken9339 has comp experience in 10 million hours, so they can't ever be wrong about anything ever, and you're wrong, Mr. Streamer. Yeah, well, uh, Clocks Darva said that the killer is in the, at least an A tier, and Clocks Darva has 3 billion hours in the game, and they've never let us stray before, so everything they say is intrinsically true, and anybody who dares fight me, everybody who dares utter a breath against their thoughts, I will fight to the death. Meanwhile, the subject of the argument for both of these sides is that this character is not left the ptb yet so who knows it just feels like i end up having to babysit people because these people are being far too hasty and usually they're not even being far too hasty they're just being in an extension of another creator who is also way too hasty on fact calling on a character that doesn't even exist in the main game yet it just gets like incredibly draining to have these arguments when people could just i don't know try to prioritize the accuracy of information over the speed of information if there's a point to this video, it's just that I want people in the DVD community to be more hesitant when it comes to creator takes concerning PTB content, whether it be characters, perks, maps, etc. Because anything that is in the PTB is subject to change and there's just not enough time to master and fully understand everything before they come to release. Just a perfect example, another perfect example, this is the Twins update. You remember when they were doing the Twins we worked, they've been working on for years and they just put out this like busted mess that could potentially overtake Nurse and that was terrifying and they just walked all that back? That whole argument that like, well, there's rarely any changes from PTB to, to live is also, that, that doesn't really have any legs to run on. Just, just be hesitant when it comes to content creator takes about new content and taking that to heart, especially if they're staying as a fact and not as an impression. They may have a lot of experience in the game. They may have a lot of authority in the game, but no one can truly master any new content day one, day two. They can't do that unless the character is fully released in their current form. So don't fall for that and check anyone who pretends to be otherwise. Anyways, that's going to be it for today's video, friends. Have you run into a situation where a creator called something early and it led to a little bit of strife? Let me know down in the comments below. But other than that, that's going to be it for today's video, friends. Thank you so much for spending part of your day with me. Hopefully I have made it a better one as a result. Otherwise, that's it. So I'll see you in the next one, friends. But if I do not, well, you know, the thing I always say, I'll see you when I see you. Goodbye.